The Shawls of Cashmere, Whither the Kani Shawl, by Vidu Ganjur and Buzz Burza. If there were a contest to determine which products are quintessentially Indian, the legendary Kani shawls of Kashmir would be at the top of the list. The finest textiles ever woven in wool, they are made from the finest material and produced with unique indigenous production techniques. The result is, in effect, wearable art. One local tradition holds that the art of pattern shawl weaving was introduced to Kashmir by the enlightened ruler Zain al Abidin in 1470 AD. Kani actually has traveled uh, from uh, Persia. Uh, Kani technique uh, was already invented in Iran. And uh, once, uh, which I know as in history, Jo Shai Hamdan Sahib Sufi Saint, Sirnagar Ayate, and he brought along uh, Karigars, craftsmen. Uh, in a mission to help and revive uh, the art in Kashmir because we had uh, wool in abundance in Kashmir. That was the speciality. shepherds were in this valley. So he saw there's such a fine wool uh, already in house. So let's bring them and show them how to weave the things. So Kani was one part of it. There were 750 karigars brought along. The global history of Kani Jamavar shawls really started with a bang when one of these exquisite pieces came into the hands of Napoleon Bonaparte in 1796. He did the only logical thing he could do. He gave it to his wife. This soon set off a trend for these shawls to be included in the European fashion world. This successful industry came under increasingly intense government control, first with the Sultanates, then with the Afghans, the Sikhs, and finally in the mid-1800s, the Dogras. So as in art, uh, I would say, who ever ruled Kashmir? Uh, art was uh, always baby of all the rulers. They all wanted to you know, uh, give creativity the best status. But there were again, uh, there were some political uh, problems. The taxes were levied on the shawl weaving once it became such a big hit when uh, Marie Antoinette Queen from France ordered 200 shawls. See, Kani had actually totally vanished if you see 200 years back. I would say because Kani technique is nowhere else in the world today, Kashmir has retained it. Uh, even if it has traveled from Iran, but it was, uh, you know, um, I would say, uh, improved. In 1860, 25,000 weavers were employed producing shawls. Their numbers were reduced to 5,000 in 1901, and by 1911, only 148 weavers were employed. This is the industry that is currently being sought to be revived. Samvedana is an NGO and uh, we are uh, involved in certain charitable activities. It's a no profit, no loss. Now, we got this idea of a revival of Kani because several of our members are Kashmir based, especially Srinagar based. And I also am a Kashmiri. And so we thought that we should revive this ancient art, the world famous Kani shawls which were extremely popular in the 19th century in Europe. And they are very expensive and it is one of the most expensive handicraft ever in the world. So we thought that we will go into the revival. We went to Srinagar to see for ourselves what the requirements for the revival of this world famous industry were. It is a craft where all of the elements of production are located under one roof and utilize the labors of the extended family unit. The women work in the ever ongoing process of cleaning, carding, and grading the raw wool. The wool is graded as thin, thick, and thicker 
and is further separated by colors such as tan, brown, mousy brown, fawn, and off-white. The very few all-white hairs are always carefully selected to eventually become part of the rarest of all shawls, the pure white. After cleaning and sorting, the weight of the wool is greatly reduced. It is then immediately spun into yarn. Once a decision is made to weave a particular shawl, the records provide details of exactly what quantities and colors of yarn are required. The necessary yarn is then assembled in lots and dyed in the appropriate colors. These processes have remained unchanged for hundreds of years. We met with a warp specialist who sets the warp on the loom and keeps complete records for each design. He has to know the length, the endings, edgings, and the pattern of the main body of the shawl. Shawls take many months to complete and mistakes cannot be corrected later. Warps are usually red in color, although some can be black or gray. In one of the shawl centers in Srinagar, we met weavers whose families have been in this profession for generations. As they weave, they know which warp to bring forward and which to send backwards as the bobbin quickly flies both ways between them. They use their feet to move wooden levers, manipulating the loom for the bobbin to quickly pass through. Pashmina and other fine yards need to be treated with a vegetable paste. This paste acts as a starch and stiffens the yarn making it more manageable and hence easier to weave. This fine yarn is used for both the web and the warp as well as to put the knots around the warp. The larger charkas are used to roll the dyed skeins for stretching and straightening as well as storing the finished yarn for future use. Smaller charkas keep the colored yarn used in connies straight and stretched. The weaver has to prepare the connies with sufficient threads in the proper colors as indicated for the plan for each shawl. The connies are then put in a straight row right next to the material that is being woven from the wrong side. After every few lines, the newly woven material is pressed down. Scissors trim the yarn where needed. If by mistake the yarn splits, gentle deft fingers rejoin the pieces with an artistic hidden splice. Production seldom exceeds a quarter of an inch per day. The current outlook for the shawl industry is quite bright as the revival is underway and Connie shawls are once again being made. This cottage industry provides women work within their homes, grading and spinning the yarn, while the men are involved with the actual weaving of Connie shawls. This revival of the Connie shawl has several centers in and around Srinagar. One of these is located in the appropriately named hamlet of Kanihama. Enterprising people have computerized the task of recording the intricate designs, thereby trusting this age-old profession firmly into the 21st century. It is a question of old designs being given new life. Yeah, we are very heavily involved and uh, totally dedicated to revival of this art. In fact, when we started going to Srinagar, especially for this work, taken it upon ourselves to make the public aware. So we are using the platform of public awareness programs for revival, so that people know about it and a certain market is then created, so that people will buy also. And also we are doing the public awareness programs for different people, younger people like in the USIS or any or in schools, senior students in schools, especially in, C, in Srinagar. We are doing public awareness programs every year for the university students, PhD students. I feel there's a huge potential for this. We have to work out we should not let any of our arts die down because what we have the world doesn't have so if we can just have dash of 
kani some motif some here there on cotton it should be tried out this kani work has all, always been tried out on pashmina and all. we should now try a hand at cotton silks and woolens this is one way of doing you can make ties out of it you could um, make sarees out of it you could have dresses out of it there's any number of things you know if you want to go very this thing you know you could make lamp shades out of it i see a lot of scope first of all people have to know what kani is if we take cottons and uh, these fabrics so they it's bound to get cheaper these things need a, a good approach help by the government now if we want these things to go on there has to be certain way of re doing the whole package bringing in some technology which helps you to overcome some of the things which take, which are time consuming we must make kani in such a way that it reaches everyone's pocket so we will be using different methods different yarn different but it will be kani it will be woven in the form of kani and we will be seeking help from some famous designers and uh, we will try our very best that we are able to do this in the next one or two years our dream or you can call it a vision for this project that we have taken upon ourselves is that first thing kani should be made and kani should be sold and we should restore it to its old glory <laughs>